Hi, this is Justice with LearnBuildBox.com. Uh, I'm excited today to show you uh, some different multi-level game ideas. I, I don't want to say that this is a fix or that this works the way exactly that I'd want it to, but it's kind of kind of exciting. I'm excited about it. I'm going to show you first uh, here what I did, and then I'll go into how I did it. So I think most of those songs are probably familiar to most of you. Those are from Zelda and uh, Super Mario World, two of my absolute favorite games. Makes me happy just to hear uh, those tunes. All right, so uh, the first thing that I want to go into is how to set up the levels. So I created my first level here, really small. Uh, this is a background. These are background images, but in the next couple, these are all just object files, and you could have a single layer here. Uh, the problem with doing multiple levels is there's not an option for doing multiple backgrounds yet. So in order to get around that, you can just layer a bunch of different single you know, object uh, background images that you would otherwise set as a background. Just put them in as objects, drag and drop them into the object one, and then put them on the scene. Again, you can do a single image that's your entire background and it would work just fine. Now, uh, for part of what I did that I thought, you know, is, is somewhat useful, one of the objects I have, this is not by default this color. If you click here on the edit and then edit the image, I changed the hue to 0.55. If you have different objects and you want to make different uh, levels easily. You can just change the color on a couple different things and it can change the feel very easily. From a green hill, this is now the burning dunes. So I put different images in the background here. That's pretty simple. And I trimmed most of these to fit basically within the boundaries of the scene. Uh, not all of them are exact, but I was having some problems in the beginning. And um, I set them up with different checkpoints. So this right here is a checkpoint, which is part of the actions. So I drag, I dragged an image file into the action button, and then I set it to set checkpoint. The beginning of every level needs a set checkpoint. The end of every level needs a next checkpoint. So none of these animation placements um, seem to have any, really don't make any difference for me because all I did was use a stagnant image. Uh, you could probably add a little bit of camera shake and flash to make it a little bit more exciting. Um, simple image, and this is set to next checkpoint. Alright, and that will bring you obviously to your next set checkpoint, not your next next checkpoint, which was very confusing to me in the beginning. Uh, I have this, by the way, also as a block. So if your character is jumping over the checkpoint thing, that it, he can't just fall off the screen, but he has to go back. Uh, now, one of the things that you want to keep in mind is while setting this up, you're going to want gameplay set to uh, platformer right here. I already have this set up and I have a couple extra options. Um, this I have currently set to block because right now there's a problem with going backwards in a level. They have it set to delete what you've already passed to save, I believe, just memory and make it run a little bit smoother on, on different iOS devices or different devices with lower memory capacities. But I'm told that there is a fix coming sometime relatively soon for this so that you can go back and forth in the level with it, it working correctly. So 
I'm looking forward to that, as I'm sure some of you are. Uh, gameplay settings, I have max speed set to 54, because otherwise I think he walks away too slow. Um, I have jump from ground, unchecked, jump counter 2, so he can do a double jump. And basically, I leave the rest of those set to standard. Uh, one other thing that I do that I think is important for me is that I change jump to F because um, I like to use both hands and having moving my hand off of his my left hand off of his default location seems annoying to me every time I do it so I switch that to F right away. Uh, all right, okay, that's all those basics. So this the reason I have a scene after the checkpoint is when I was getting to here, I was seeing the next scene, which was the Burning Dunes level, which completely destroyed the illusion of warping to the next level. So uh, I put one extra scene after it. Now you can do this pretty easily if you have a scene already created, like this this one right here that I have. If I hit any the WASD keys, how they repeat the objects on the screen, they do the same thing for levels. So right here and right here, these are now duplicate levels because I just hit D. Um, now I'm going to delete these because I don't need to say anything. Delete key, yes. Delete key, yes. So I set up these levels, put in the images to create different looking backgrounds, and when I want to do it, I hit my first next checkpoint right here and it did not work so what I realized I had forgotten to do was hit align scenes so you're going to hit align scenes click OK and now when we go back in here this should work correctly and warp you to the next spot now there is one other important aspect that I think some of you are probably wondering this is in a different tutorial but I don't mind repeating I have this right here is my music. So I just threw in any old image file. I have it set basically where the character spawns. So it's immediately going to trigger this. Uh, you could go in here and click the image, drop the opacity down to 0.5. Or, I mean, really to zero. But in order for this tutorial to make sense visually, I'll leave that slightly. Um, with a little bit of opacity or opacity at 50 percent all right so here when the character bumps into this this is again an action not an object when it bumps into that it is going to trigger the start sound of my level music i have duration set to 300 um, because i want it to continue playing through and all of these are set to zero on their defaults and then you'll notice when I get over here to the next level this looks like the same thing it is not this is a different one this is the overworld soundtrack or uh, yeah background music from the Legend of Zelda again duration set to 300 and over here I put my set checkpoint and my music icon they look the same they're not the same thing I put them in the same location so that it spawns me directly on top of my music power up and this is the ghost house level music from Super Mario World uh, let's see there's one other thing that I think you need to know right here this is set to end game Again, I just dragged an image into Actions. And then up here, if you don't have anything set in End Screen, absolutely nothing will happen when you hit that, that power up. Here I have this animate, or this is just a default image. I dragged it into Image. This is a button, not an action button, set to Start Game. And this is just a text label right here. To get music on that screen, you click here and you drag your music into that little drop box. All right, I think I remembered everything. I'm sure there'll be a couple things that I forget. 
Oh, yes, I know what it is. These different text elements. Uh, this first one is just a label. Uh, when I put this in here, I had it set to um, default size of 60. And that screwed a whole bunch of things up. I changed main color, gradient color to the same color, uh, added uh, stroke and shadow just by having those different things there. And I chose a default font. Font. When this was set to 60, everything, uh, demonstrate it, everything was really uh, garbled together or mixed together. And it was causing problems on the screen as well. So if you want a font size of 60, set it to something smaller and scale it up over here, it'll work just fine. And it can alleviate some problems that I was having earlier with the text not appearing correctly. Uh, this one up here, these animated ones, this is just an object I set to decoration. Linear velocity is 20, uh, negative 30 here on the other axis. Uh, set to collide, which I really don't think has any bearing at all because it's underneath. And I have it set to wake up on distance base of 100. This I don't believe does anything, but I was playing around with it. So when the character walks over this, it's going to be within this wake up distance of 100 pixels. And that's going to move this down here. And because this is the parent of this, meaning I'm drawing from this circle up to that one, because this parent goes down here, it's going to pull the level 2 object image uh, down with it. And the same thing here with this one over here. You'll see it's the same, uh, although this one just has a negative 20, and that worked just fine. Over here, I have a slightly more advanced one. I wanted to do these from uh, easy to harder, uh, more advanced. Uh, this one is an object. I played around with setting it up as an action, but that was a little too much. This is just the default animation. I made this in After Effects. If any of you guys are interested in learning how to make animated PNG image sequences in After Effects, like this text one, please let me know. I, I don't mind spending time on that, but I know there's a lot of After Effects tutorials out there. So this is just set to default animation. Nothing really special about this, and it plays through. Um, I played around with a whole bunch of different options for this, trying to get it just to play once, and it didn't didn't really do it the way I wanted to. Um, I set this to 0.5 for the animation's playback speed, so it goes a little bit slower. All right, let's see. I also put these at the end here to keep the character from walking off the end without hitting the checkpoint that I wanted them to hit. You notice it over here and over here. All right, I think that's everything. If there's something I forgot, please leave something in the uh, a comment telling me what it is that you need me to re-explain. Uh, otherwise, I hope you guys really enjoy this tutorial. I'm, I'm actually excited to try this with doors and bringing a character into a house, which is set up as a scene. So he'll go in one door, and then he'll come back out and uh, hopefully be able to go right back to the level. I think that would be really cool. All right, well, thanks for watching, and uh, I'll see you next time.